I'm, I'm hoping that you all have noticed like how careful we select our speaker sets. So yesterday we had like all weird English accents. Today we have all like Germanic accents. It's like I'm including myself too. <laughs> um, Janis um, is in the works in the Netherlands right now. I think he's originally from Germany, right? Yeah. Um, He's a collaborative player in Robert Schwartz. Like he couples models together uh, and tries to like enhance them. And he uses BMI. And so that gains you a student talk here. <laughs> um, but we're excited about his work. Uh, Glowfrim is a globally applicable computation network for uh, hydrological modeling. Oh yeah, uh, good morning. Indeed, uh, I think it was a really nice introduction. Thank you for that. Um, Glowfrim, that is basically my PhD work I did in the, in the Netherlands, the University of Utrecht. And I'm just going to give you a really brief uh, summary of the work I did in the past six years. Um, Glowfrim, the name stands for yeah, a globally, globally applicable framework for integrated hydrologic hydrodynamic modeling. It's a bit clumsy, maybe, but uh, I couldn't come up with any better name. So if anyone has a nice uh, idea, I'm pretty happy to hear it um, to improve that. So. Um, it all comes down to this uh, equation. Like one plus one is three, or um, saying hydrology plus hydrodynamics, do we find any synergy here? Can we, by coupling hydrologic and hydrodynamic models, can we improve our simulation results? And this is not just any weird assumption. Of course, it's based on hard facts. And um, if you compare hydrology and hydrodynamics, we see that they have distinct properties. And um, for instance, the hydrology, if you look at that in particular global scale hydrology, we see that it's forced by global meteorology. So it's spatially distributed. We have values for almost any, any place on the earth. Whereas if we run hydrodynamic models, we are depending on observation stations and many models are just forced by upstream boundaries. So we really lack a lot of locations where we don't have, uh, let's say, inflow or yeah, cannot properly simulate inundation. Um, however, if you look at other aspects as um, the routing of, of the models, you see that the large-scale hydrologic uh, models are not really performing well because they, for instance, only solve the kinematic wave approximation, which is definitely um, inferior to the, the full shadow water equation. Now, for instance, it comes to backwater effects or so that can really have some uh, big impact. And also the phase resolution differs uh, remarkably. We see that the global hydrologic models we run a pretty coarse resolution. So um, I think the finest we can get at the moment is around um, five arc minutes, uh, that's, uh, 10 square kilometers of the crater. Whereas as Paul, uh, Paul already showed uh, two days ago that um, with hydrodynamics model, you can really go to finer spatial resolutions, for instance, like up to 30 meters, which of course improves the, the representation of the flood extent that's also shown in the um, bottom right picture. So. I thought, okay, coupling that is nice, and I developed some code, and at one point I had to give it a name, and I called it Glowfrim. And uh, in Glowfrim, that is a framework that allows for spatially explicit coupling, and this um, means that we do a grid-to-grid -grid assignment, and uh, the coupling between the two models really happens from one grid to the uh, corresponding grid in another model. It's online coupling, so it happens at a time step level, so it's not just running one model and then using the output as input for the next one, but really, yeah, it happens simultaneously, which gives us a lot of flexibility in, in establishing, for instance, feedback loops between the models. And um, it's uh, free and open, so um, everyone can use it, can download it if they're interested. It's not behind uh, walls. And it's modular, so people can add uh, other models uh, if they want, if they think, okay, I have a model I want to put in there, or yeah, just out of curiosity, or because it performs better, maybe. Um, it's it's quite straightforward to add models. So the entire framework then contains uh, a lot of Python functions to couple the grids and exchange the data. It also um, contains a, like an interface script that um, actually performs the coupling of the, of the models. So it calls the, the BMI adapters, but I'll come to that later, um, for the different models and then just links the different variables, input and output variables, and also performs unit conversions, for instance, as necessary. And it contains a set of BMI models, um, so models that are or where we implemented some, some BMI adapters so it, they are, can be coupled within Glowframe. Those models are uh, shown here. So we have um, 
hydrologic models. We have PCA Globe WB, that's from the University of Utrecht, that's a, a global scale hydrologic model. And also the WFlow suite, so this is not global scale, but the nice thing about WFlow is that it contains a lot of other hydrologic models, so it's the um, HPV or SPM model. We now recently added the um, global routing model Camoflet, and it contains um, two, um, one D, two D hydrodynamic models. The one is called Lisford FB. I think you heard about that right now, and some maybe even followed the clinic by Paul. And the other one is Dove 3D Flexible Mesh that's developed by the Tarot in the Netherlands as well. But as I already uh, said, it's, the models are coupled by using the BMI concept, um, the basic model interface. And um, I, you know, I guess many people already know about it, heard about it here in SCSDMS. Um, but just maybe provide some course outline how it works. So it's every model has an adapter, and with that adapter or wrapper, uh, we can communicate with the models, and we can actually perform the steps the model would otherwise do auto automatically. But now we can do that by using commands. And the, I think the five major commands. I think there's a big discussion we had that two days ago. What are the main commands within the, within the BMI? But I think I think that are really really important. So we can initialize the model. Then you can get variables, for instance, runoff from the hydrologic model. You can set variables, so we can convert the runoff into a discharge, for instance, and then get a set this discharge into the hydrodynamic models. And then for the online coupling, we update both models until um, the end of the modeling run. And once uh, we're done with the simulation, we can finalize the model. What we then only need is really this interface script in between to execute the different functions for different models. Give you like a nice visualization how it works. We see here um, um, a lot of lines, and uh, the blue blue lines. I hope you can see that it's the one D network for Delft three D flexible mesh for for the Elbe. I think it's pretty obvious, and um, that's when we force it with output from the KMA flat model. And really see okay, depending on the if the the models are at the edge of the Delft three D model, we we use the discharge that was routed before or um, if it's already within the basin, we use the runoff that's coming from PCA Club. And that, yeah, that happens really on a cell to cell basis. So it's a nice, uh, we really get all the spatial variations in, in simulation runs and also in the input data. And you can use it um, for many, many things. So I'll just show a selected uh, number of applications. Um, for instance, we can replace the routing uh, scheme from, from PCA Club. As I already said, it's not really good, it has the kinematic wave. and some issues uh, if you want to simulate discharge in an efficient way. So what we did is um, we used the Dell 3D flexible mesh model. You can see it here for the Amazon uh, river bed or just a part of it, but still big enough. And um, we, we forced or we used the output from PCA Globe and put it into Dell 3D and then we compared the, the simulated discharge. And um, that's a lot of lines, so I can keep it short. Um, we see here that on the left side, the left side, yes, um, the DIN route, so that's a routing scheme for PCA Globe that has a encrypt efficiency of 0.64, whereas if we use the same input or same forcing, meteorological forcing, and put it into a hydrodynamic model, we get an increase to 1.79. Uh, uh, so we can conclude um, coupling models uh, is beneficial, in particular if we talk about discharge simulation. We can also use it to benchmark hydrodynamic models. So we use the same output from PCA globe and put it into different hydrodynamic models, and then we compare and see why are uh, maybe results different. In this case, we compared the Delft 3D flexible mesh model with the LISPLAT model, again, for the same, uh, same area in the Amazon River Basin. Um, you also see that the models are different. The flexible mesh, as it says, it's flexible and uh, contains different grid sizes, so they um, vary between 2 and 10 kilometers, whereas the LISPLAT model has a regular grid, 2 kilometers base resolution. And that, of course, impacts the number of cells, uh, 1D and 2D cells. But the main thing is about this is that we use the same um, boundary conditions. So we use um, a zero meter um, water level boundary. Also, the hydrologic forcing is identical between the models. So there is no uncertainty. And at least that's why we can say that. At least there's no difference. And what you see is that the results are actually quite similar in terms of discharge. But if you look at this inundation extent, we see that the differences are quite remarkable. And um, there are two locations I want to point out. One is at the at the river mouth, um, 
I don't know what hap what happens there, so uh, I don't have ex any explanation, but it should be the same boundary conditions, but still the models perform differently. Um, and then also in the upstream part, we see that by using a flexible mesh and using coarser grid sizes in, in those areas uh, compared to the regular grid, we see that, of course, inundation extent differs, and uh, with, the, yeah, with the flexible mesh, we get large inundation extent, whereas maybe the number of inundated cells is actually the same. And uh, recently, we, um, we, yeah, we added the Camouflet model, so that allowed us to do some nested modeling across scale. So nested modeling is uh, just we use one bigger model, and then for a certain location, we use a finer um, model, for instance, yeah, 1D, 2D hydrodynamics. And that works like this. So we have the runoff from the hydrologic model. Um, we put it into Camouflet, so that does the intermediate routing um, throughout the entire basin. And then we couple that routed discharge, as I showed before, to the DAL3D model. Um, so we really see that there are really different scales and there are different um, levels of detail in the model. So we have a relatively coarse hydrologic uh, model. We have then a pretty detailed large scale routing, but the, it's just 1D and uh, we cannot really simulate inundation extent in a, in a, at a high level of detail. And then in the where it becomes important, so at the river mouth, the river delta, we use 1D, 2D simulations to explicitly simulate the inundation extent. That we call them um, nested modeling. And I made some uh, really, really cool uh, animations. If it works, if it doesn't, bummer. No animations today. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Anything happening? No, that's really sad. Put so much time in that. Bummer. Um, well, what you still can see is that um, that's inundation extent from the three different models. So we can really see that if you use a coarse hydrologic model and simulate inundation extent, we see, of course, it works, but the resolution is not really what we want. And making some kind of risk assessment whatsoever and based on that information is, I think, really hard. Um, so that's the top left corner. And the top right corner is then the same as came of that. We already see, okay, it's it's a nice, much nicer resolution, and but still, it's of course only um, applicable maybe for large scale and coarse uh, risk assessment. But if you really want to go to high detail, oh, there is some. I think I stopped this here. Also not. Well, anyway. Um, so and then if you look, what's happening here? Someone took over the. Um, yeah, <laughs> if you look at the bottom picture, we see that this is the Delft 3D, 1D, 2D uh, model, and that is really, really detailed. So I think there the space resolution is around one kilometer, um, two kilometers at the river mountain. We see that the inundation dynamics and inundation depth and extent is much better resolved than in the other models. And uh, I would go on to the next slide. So that's the next slide. Yeah. Um, so maybe this is this works. So again, we see the same nice discharge hydrographs, and we see a lot of differences. And if you look at the bottom picture, we see this three different coupled models. And we see indeed that the dynamics and also the dynamic, the variation over time differ depending on what kind of model we use. And expressing that in uh, some easily understandable numbers, we see that if we just use the PCR globe with the DIN route force, and we get okay results. It doesn't really take a long time. But then if we add a proper 1D, 2D, uh, 1D routing with the Camouflat model, we see that the runtime is just a third of what it was before, whereas the accuracy doesn't even change. So I think that's a really big improvement, in particular for large-scale simulations where runtime can be a bottleneck. And then if you add the um, 1D, 2D models, model, we see that the runtime explodes, which is not really um, handy maybe, but the accuracy increases even more. And I think that's just looking at discharge, of course, but if you compare inundation extent, I think the difference between the models get even more pronounced. So what am I planning in the remainder of my PhD, which is unfortunately not really uh, long anymore? Um, I want to add the ModFlow model in there so we can um, apply groundwater um, simulations, groundwater processes to the inundated uh, extent in the high inundation model. So it would look like this, that we have output from PCA globe, put it in the inundation model, then couple that back to PCA globe and MudFlow, and then again MudFlow and PCA globe are updated to update the inundation model again, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Um, also, it could be used to replace downscaling approaches for hydrologic models. So it's just using large scale models, but if you really want to look at detailed um, 
in a dash extent, I think that tool can be can be used, or at least you want to try it. And also by um, maybe implementing like a crop growth model at one point, we can also look into agricultural flood risk. So in a, just to wrap it up, GlowFrame provides a plug and play framework. It can easily be extended with other models. I think that's a really strong point. So uh, it's not just a fixed code and uh, it's flexible, it's open, you can work with that. You can perform nested modeling simulations and it is able to provide simulations from the mountains to the coast. So we can, in the hydrologic model, we can have some snow, snow module uh, solved. Then we have the 1D routing over the larger domain. And in the river mouth, we can have actually really, really detailed simulation simulations. And yeah, we can get it stuff. So um, there is a, a first version is um, available as Zenodo, but that's already a bit outdated. There are a lot of things happening in the, in the meantime. And if you want to have the most uh, up-to-date version, you can just go to um, GitHub or you can before I end this presentation, I also want to thank my collaborators from different uh, research institutes. And yeah, what I also want to say is the model coupling is really nice to bring together models, but it's also really good to bring together different disciplines and different research groups. And I think that's really, really a uh, nice part of the end. Thank you. Thank you, Janis. Um, I, I think I, we can work with you to like make available these movies for people um, on the repositories or, or on the um, website afterwards. Like give people a peek into them yeah. later on. Still, are there any questions out of the audience? A short one is what we would like to see. No.